In this problem, we have a cylindrical storage tank with a radius of 15 feet and a height of 30 feet. They want us to do three things. They want us to sketch it, label its dimensions, find the volume, and find the surface area. So let's try that. Now, when we're sketching it, right, the radius is 15 and the height is 30 feet. So if you think about a circle, right, our top and bottom squished circle, kind of 3D circle thing with a center, the radius is 15, right? I mean, that's this distance right here. Let me use a different pen. The radius is right here. And that is, of course, only 15. But the diameter stretches all across the circle. So the diameter equals 30. So in other words, the distance here is also equal to the height. So when we sketch this out, we should get a cylinder where the height is approximately equal, or it is, it is equal to the, the diameter, but it looks about equal. So careful when you sketch that out. The height here is 30, and this should be a circle on the bottom, more, more curvature there. But but also, of course, the, the diameter is 30, so they should, they should about match. I'm just going to clear this off here. Looks better. Okay. So that's my sketch of my cylinder. Now I want to label the dimension. So I have the height, and I have the diameter. I might also label the radius down here, just to help me out. The radius r equals 15. Done. Now find the volume. Well, how do we do that? Well, with a cylinder, we take the area of the circle and then multiply it by the height. Because essentially what we're doing is finding how many, how many circles that equal the area of the circle up here with a height of 1 fit into this tank. So it's going to be three area circles, right? The, the, height, is, oop, the height is 30. So it's going to be 30, sorry, 30 area circles that fit into the shape, one stacked above each other. So let's find the area of this circle. That's pi r squared, and be careful with this formula. This means take pi and multiply it by the radius twice. So pi times 15 times 15, and I'm going to leave it in terms of pi, which means it's 225 times pi. That's the area of the circle up here. Now if this circle had a height of 1, you can imagine like this thin slice right here. Color it in. You're asking now to find the volume, how many of these disks will fit in this cylinder. So to do that, we just multiply, right? The area of that of that circle with a, with a height of 1. So now we're looking at a volume times a height, so times 30. And this gives us the total volume of the cylinder. So let's get our calculator out here. Oops. Let's get our calculator out here. We're doing 225 times 30. I'm going to leave pi alone. I'm not going to multiply by pi yet. I get 6,750. I get 6,750. Pi, right? 6,750 pi. That's my volume. Now, if you want to evaluate this closer, you have a couple of options. You can multiply this by an approximation of pi, but I'm just going to round pi to 3 to get a sense of what the volume is. So the volume is about, well, it's about triple this, right? Oops. The volume is about triple of this, so we do this times 3. It gives us about a volume of 20,000, right, 250. And the more you approximate pi, the closer you get to the actual, actual value. And this is cubic feet, right? So feet cubed. That's our volume. Now the surface area is going to be different because now we, and we already have part of the surface area, the area of the top circle, right, is part of the surface area here. But to find the surface area, we also want to add in the bottom circle, and then this lateral surface here, right, this wrapping part in the, in the middle. The surface area has a circle on the top and then a circle on the bottom, right? It has two equal circles, and this diagram is awful, I'm sorry, but this, this circle and this circle are both equal. And we know that the area of one circle, as we just concluded, is 225 pi. So two circles would be equal to 2 times 225 pi. And, and we found those top and bottom faces. Now we need to add this, this lateral surface right here, right? If you think about what this face is, it's just a rectangle that's been wrapped into a circle. And so if we unwrap the rectangle, we can think that, oh, well, the height of the rectangle is the height of the prism. So the height's just 30 of this rectangle. But what's the width? And that's the, that's the fun part of the rest of this rectangle. This width of this rectangle has to wrap around the circle. 
And that means, if you remember about a circle, when you wrap around a circle, that's called circumference. So the width of this, of this rectangle is the circumference of the circle up here. So, so what was the radius? Well, the radius was 15, right? What's the diameter? Well, the diameter is double that. That's 30. And circumference equals diameter times pi. That's what circumference is. So in this case, our circumference is 30 pi. So here, this width of this rectangle is 30 pi. So to find the area of this rectangle, because we're finding surface area, and we want to find the area of all the faces, we, we take 30 and multiply it by 30 pi. Now, what we do is 30 times 30 pi, that's, that's 900 pi, right? And we add five, well, 450 pi to that, right? Because 2 times 225 is 450. Add up these two, we get 1350 pi, and then square units, whatever units that we're looking at. But if I want to estimate with pi, I can just say pi is equal to 3 in this case, because we're not really given a parameter here. And then multiply 3 by 1350 to get an estimation of the surface area. So here I get 4,000, right, and 50. And this is an approximation if, right, if pi is about 3. And of course, we don't want to forget our units, right? Cube, uh, square feet, of course, because we're looking at with surface area the amount of squares that actually cover the surface of the shape. So I get about 4,050 square feet. All right, thanks.